This video is on a DT Swiss 373 Paul hub conversion to the DT Swiss Ratchet 54 tooth. Uh, so uh, the bike, by the way, is a Cannondale Top Cell Lifting One that I bought in 2020. According to the Cannondale specs, the hub is a hologram with DT Swiss 370 internals but it pretty much looks like a DT Swiss 370 hub, so I'm just gonna call it that. And if you're watching this video, you've probably seen a lot of other videos uh, doing this. So I'm gonna start with the two things that you're probably here for most, which is what is the sound difference between the three pole and the 54 tooth? And second of all, how did I get the Paul ring out of the hub. So here we go to the sound. Okay, so how did I get the Paul ring out of the hub? Uh, I've already kind of had it out here, but there's a lot of information online about how difficult it can be because kind of as you pedal the bike, it constantly tightens this thing and uh, gets real tight in there. So uh, the gist of it is usually a lot of people have a tool kind of like this that they put in a vise and then will turn the wheel to get leverage to back it out. Uh, the DT Swiss tool is 60 to $80 and it's kind of hard to justify that cost for a one-time use thing. I did go ahead and buy one off eBay for like $12 or $13, but it didn't come in the mail quick enough and I just really wanted to get this done. So what I did is I went to um, the bike shop and they weren't really familiar with this procedure that you could do this. And they also didn't have the tool that fits inside this perfect. And they also didn't seem very interested in buying the tool. And they were kind of like, well, you can buy it. And, uh, you know, I just, I wasn't really prepared for that conversation. I maybe could have said, hey, you know, I bought a seven or $8,000 bicycle and you can't even service it. But uh, I kind of did something in between. I just said, well, like, how about this? Why don't we split the cost of the tool? You guys can keep the tool, but you gotta help me take the ring out. And they were like, okay, deal. So that's how we did it. We did the vice, the vice method and kind of clamped the tool in the vice and it came right out, uh, kind of like a little bit of muscle and a good tug. It didn't take like two people or anything, but I would say too that, I mean, you can kind of see the condition of it. It's pretty clean in there. I don't do a lot of like real dirty riding or riding rain and all that stuff. So that probably did have something to do with the ease of getting it out. Uh, some other methods I've seen people do, one guy like attached a board and like to get more leverage on the wheel. Uh, another guy uh, took a cassette tool and put it inside that and then took an impact wrench. I think it was about a, I think it's an inch maybe. I decided not to go that route even though I think it would work. It just kind of seemed like it would damage the ring and like I just wanted to keep the parts. I'm not sure if I may ever convert it back. Uh, also kind of another thing is it's only six points in this and if it slips, you know, not only can it damage the, the ring, but it, if it slipped too much and you, you damage this and you can't get the proper tool in there to take it out of the hub, then I'd be looking at buying a new hub and the cost of all these parts is really kind of borderline or about halfway the cost of the new hub. So just really kind of wanted to um, limit my exposure to unforeseen costs. Okay, so now let's cover the parts that it takes to do this. So on this side, I have the three Paul pieces and on this side, I have the ratchet conversion kit along with the uh, 54 tooth. So uh, starting up here, it's a ratchet LN for, uh, it, it's, I have an XD uh, hub and I went with aluminum because it was cheaper than steel. 
lighter than steel and I didn't want to spend more money if this didn't work. And you know, I'll just keep an eye on the hub. If it shows a lot of wear, I may end up just buying a steel one. We'll see though. And then down here is the 54 tooth. It's a Ratchet SL. So the 18 tooth comes with the kit. Looks like that. It is not an SL and you'll, you can see that because the inside of it is solid where the SL is uh, kind of like hollowed out in there. There's like a lip, so it's definitely lighter weight. So my strategy with the ratchets is that I, I really like the serviceability to just be able to, I don't need any tools to uh, be able to service them on the road or on the trail. And my strategy is that I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna install the 54 tooth, but I'm gonna keep the 18 tooth uh, it's going to be pre-greased and I'll, I'll probably wrap some electrical tape or something around it just so nothing gets contaminated in the grease and I have my springs, both of them, and I'm going to put them in my spare kit there and that way I have kind of full backups ready to go. Okay, so let's move on to installation. So once you get all the old pieces out, uh, you can the first thing to do is install the ring. So you'll note that there are two sides. This side is completely flat and it faces up. And then the other side is, there's like a notch that the little spacer there goes inside. So you can see it's a black spacer and when it's installed, there's still maybe a couple millimeter gap down there. And again, the washer goes down like that. Uh, once you get that, it's just, uh, well, yeah, I guess like the spring goes on top and then the washer and then those and then the little spring faces in and then that goes on top. Also, when it comes to the grease, uh, you can watch DC Swiss stuff, but obviously you want to grease the teeth, but you also want to grease uh, these outside rings because they they essentially float within both sides, within the free hub and uh, also w within this ring. So the, the spring guy yeah, just, you know, it's constantly going up and down, so make sure those are greased. Okay, and one more thing that I do want to point out is there's a lot of stuff on the internet that talk about the seal. And what I just kind of want to show is what that looks like. So uh, you can kind of see that there is a seal there at the bottom and it does sit very, very flush. So, and the seal comes with the, on the ratchet and LN itself. I did not remove it from the original three paw. I can kind of put them side by side there. So you can see that it's, it's exactly the same size and everything. So now let's go ahead and do the actual, actual installation. So you can see here, I have the ring flat side facing up. The spacer is down there, it's flush and centered. So I've already greased the spring that goes in there. The spacer, this came with the Ratchet LN kit. It is a different spacer than what originally came on the uh, three paw. So you can see it's a little bit bigger. So we can get that going on there. Ratchets pre-greased, this is the 54 tooth. that and yeah you can kind of see it slides the bottom ratchet slides into those grooves in the ring kind of <laughs> and then the spring goes there small side facing down and then finally uh, that thing the free hub it's a little hard to get it kind of spaced space co correctly or there's like bearings that kind of float in there, or there's like a, a ring in between the bearings, and, but uh, yeah, it goes on. So that's it, finished product. And then I have my original three Paul spare parts here. It's just three three parts. And if I sell the bike or, or whatever, if I decide to go back to Paul, I, I have all my parts. So that's it. All right, one more thing. So once I got the wheel back together, I went ahead on the stand and kind of went through all the gears and it was fine. But when I went out for a ride, I was having trouble 
getting it to downshift from 10 to 11 and from 11 to 12. So I, I did a micro, or this is a, an Eagle Axis uh, X01. So I had to do a micro adjustment. I did, uh, I moved it two times out uh, this way. Uh, I think each, each movement out is 0.5 millimeters. So essentially I moved it out by one millimeter and now shifting is back to normal. And a real quick lesson. Uh, so these are uh, four shifters, but there's an axis button on the inside and you push it down and then with it pressed in, then you shift. And that's what performs the operation. So good to know that too.